Hello guys and welcome. In this video we're gonna create this small soccer game using Unity. Okay, first we're gonna download some 3D models and textures to use in our game. So I'm gonna type in um, soccer field texture and um, I will download this texture to use as the soccer field. And uh, on this side I found some uh, 3D models we can use. I downloaded different goals and also a few balls. So we will just find out which one is the best uh, when once we're inside Unity. And then we'll go to my favorite Mixamo um, site and with your Adobe account, which you can create for free. You can uh, find these characters in here. Um, let's go with Sophie as a female character. I'm gonna download her uh, as a T-pose and also we're gonna download Bryce because we will have two uh, persons who will just be um, opponents of each other. I've chosen these two because they have um, uh, a bit red and orange uh, s skins and uh, it contrasts nicely with the uh, green field that we're using. So after that we're gonna um, add some animations. From we're the only gonna need one animation because we can use the run and uh, jump animations from uh, the third person example that we already have. So we're only going to use this uh, animation for the soccer kick. By the way, if you use um, uh, an animation like this, always be sure to tick in place so that um, the character isn't moving. The moving is usually done by uh, the code with scripting in Unity itself. So, but we're going to go for this kick for now. So let's download that one. Uh, we don't need the skin because we already downloaded the skin separately. We're going to save it as FBX for Unity at a, a frame rate of 30 seconds. So let's hit download and continue. Okay, I'm at Unity Hub and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to use the latest version of Unity and I'm going to create a 3D URP project. I'm going to use URP over the uh, building pipeline because um, URP is um, giving us better quality and it's going to be the future uh, standard uh, render pipeline anyway. Uh, there's also HDRP, it's even higher quality but it is not as compatible so the version we chose runs on uh, mobile devices and such. So let's uh, give our project a name. Let's call it uh, Unity uh, FC and hit uh, create project. Okay, here we are at Unity. Let's first start to. Um, okay, let's first import the starter assets from Unity. So we have a starting point for our third person game. Because um, this uh, game is going to be a third person. Uh. Okay, let's first go to the asset store and download the Unity starter assets. There it is. import it to our project it's gonna ask us to use the new input system we're gonna say yes and after that we're gonna restart okay after importing the uh, third person starter assets we're gonna have um, a look at it um, we have 
a thing already here somewhere. Um, so over here, you can open this scene. You see that there's a lot of pink stuff at the moment. That's because we decided to use URP and that's not the default um, rendering type. So we need to convert the material that's been used in this um, asset to um, the URP material. So let's go to all materials. And you can immediately see here which materials are causing problems. You can select them and then uh, go to um, rendering materials convert to URP. Um, so I'm going to do that for all the pink materials. And I hope it's working. If you can't convert them, what you need to do is select a different shader over here for the material. You need um, a universal render pipeline, URP shader. Um, for example, the lit one is a default one that's just uh, good enough okay if we press play uh, we can already see this um, robot moving around you can jump you can look around it's a nice starting point but we don't want this uh, demo scene so I'm gonna find out where it's located so I select uh, an object in the scene and I see that actually all these objects are organized in this element gray box if I disable it everything disappears so we're gonna delete this uh, object and now we have um, an empty scene but we still have the player and the camera so that's what we want to use and I run the game now the character is just falling down there is no floor anymore so let's just add that first we're gonna create a cube and uh, we're gonna extend it on the X and Z axis um, so now at least our character is not falling down anymore and we're gonna make a soccer field out of this so let's first add all the downloaded uh, models and textures they are over here um, I've created this uh, folder called game where I'll put all the stuff that I created myself or all the custom stuff because I didn't create this myself of course um so we have a ball here and a soccer goal some animations and character so let's create um, a subfolder and call it character I'm gonna move all the stuff from the character in there so the characters and the animations this stuff I'm gonna keep here for now so to use this um, texture we need to create a material first so let's create a material and uh, this picture of the football field it's gonna be uh, our base map 
and now we're going to use this material for the um, cube that we created earlier on so let's drag this material over here so this is already um, better but um, I see that the, uh, the size of the <coughs> soccer field needs to be changed so we're gonna extend it over the x-axis and make it a bit smaller on the z-axis so this is more like uh, the real dimensions of a football field okay looking good so now let's add the soccer goals these goals fit nicely with this um, landscape we need to rotate them resize them a little bit okay I think this is fine I'll just copy this and put the other one at the far end okay cool so we got two uh, goals of the same size <coughs> but you can see that we can walk through this goal the reason for this is that there is no collider on it yet so we need to create one fortunately that's not very difficult We can just select the goal and create um, a mesh collider for it. The mesh that we're going to use for it is, um, I think, this one because that's the posts. Yeah, so now it's working. We can no longer uh, run through the posts. We can still run through this part because we didn't create a collider for that but that's not that important the main thing is that uh, also the ball will now no longer um, go through the posts but bounce off so the next thing we're gonna bring into the game is the ball okay this ball is way too big and also um, see something strange here because everything changes color if we take a close look at this ball it's not just a ball but it's also a plane over here so the person who created this also created this plane I don't know maybe he thought it was a good idea but um, we don't want to have that so let's just uh, unpack this um, prefab so now we can delete these planes that I don't want 
and um, actually I also don't need this uh, light and I don't know why this circle is here and this camera I'm gonna delete them all I'm interested in is these uh, two meshes these are the stitches and this is the bowl itself so those two are just fine uh, another thing is that the bowl is way too big so um, we can just uh, make it a bit smaller and we need to do that on the main object of course so all the um, child's will also be uh, resized so now we got a soccer field we got a ball with uh, the right size and we got some goals but the next thing is this ball is now floating in the air and it should be dropping onto this soccer field the reason for this is that um, first of all there is no uh, collider but there's also no um, body so we add uh, a rigid body to it this just applies physics to the ball so if we now run the game again the ball should fall onto the field but it falls through the field and that's because there is also no collider um, The best collider for this ball is a sphere collider. And we can see what it looks like over here. It's a bit smaller than the actual ball. So we can resize it a little bit. So it resembles the ball. And now If we run the game again we see that the ball is actually lying on the field okay so let's replace this uh, robot character with uh, the character we downloaded from Mixamo to do that we first uh, take the downloaded characters and copy them to unity and then um, we're gonna have to uh, make sure that um, the rig is humanoid and then um, we're gonna extract the materials the textures because if you look at the characters now you can see that they're not painted yet to do that so we need to extract the textures and after that just press fix here um, After that we can now uh, add this um, character to uh, and to replace it uh, the robot. To do that we will uh, find the robot. It's this uh, object, player armature. 
it contains uh, a camera route, just the location for the camera, the geometry and a skeleton and the geometry just has a, a skinned mesh renderer which refers to the hips inside the skeleton so they took it apart so this actually is uh, both used to create this um, 3d model we can just drag in our um, model uh, let's take this one drag it into the geometry now if you press play you can already see that uh, this uh, character is uh, moving along with the robot but it's still not animated and that's because for animation uh, the avatar is used and that's the avatar of the robot so we're gonna change that to the avatar of this character actually this is the 42 so should be this one now if we uh, run the program again you see that uh, our character is animated and the robot is no longer animated so that works just the final step is to get rid of the robot so we can just remove the skeleton actually also here we need to first um, unpack this prefab because it's a prefab and then we can um, remove the skeleton part and also this amateur mess is no longer needed so let's run again and over here we have a character animated and uh, the way we want it to be it's looking kind of funny I see there's a few lights over here that can be removed so this looks better but uh, anyway we have our character running on the soccer field already okay so I have uh, removed the fog uh, over here in the environment and uh, also I've changed the the speed of the player so it all moves a little bit more like I want it and now we're gonna um, change the ball uh, if you now run over the ball it's not gonna stick to your feet but I want it to stick to the player so that I can the player can walk around with the ball and then when he presses the left mouse button he can shoot the ball so uh, to do that we need to create a script so I've created this folder and now we're gonna create a first script in here let's call it uh, ball because it's a script for the ball uh, we open it by double clicking and uh, then we're gonna open it with Visual Studio Community Edition this is the standard uh, layout for the script we got an update function that's going to be called every time the frame gets updated by unity so in here we can already put some code so the first thing I want to do is to add a reference to the player because I'm gonna need the player uh, inside the ball object so um, I take this uh, code uh, and the serialized field is telling the um, unity that uh, it should publish uh, the this property so if we save this and I'll go back uh, we go to the ball object we're gonna add a script to it and then you can see this reference to the player we need to fill that out ourselves so we're gonna fill it with this the base of the the mesh for the player 
um, I've called it player skeleton and uh, now we have a reference to this so we can use this position um, to know the location of the player inside the ball script so to see the that we're gonna put this in the update function so we're gonna find out the distance to the player uh, by uh, calculating the distance from the player to this object the ball and we're gonna show it in the debug so if we save this and run the game we can open the console and we will see the distance that's now about 8.4 so if we get closer to the ball it changes to 2.9 and when we're close like this I think then we want to get the ball sticking to the player so if we're in past it like this 6.5 then uh, we don't want to stick head of it to stick but if we get any closer let's say 0 0.5 then it needs to stick to the player so we can uh, add code for that um, so I'm gonna create a variable called stick to player um, a private variable that's just going to be used inside the script so uh, we know the status if the ball needs to stick to the player or not and we're going to use uh, this code so if the ball is not sticking to the player yet so that's the beginning situation then we're going to measure the distance if the distance is smaller than I just found out it needs to be 1.0.5 then we're going to stick to the player and uh, as soon as it's sticking to the player we're going to just uh, use the transform uh, position uh, of the player uh, to put that on the ball so let's run this um, and see if it works so running over the ball getting closer to the ball and it's now sticking to the player but we immediately see the next problem um, this ball is not high enough it needs to be higher also it needs to be a little bit in front of the player so if I'm facing this direction it needs to be on that side if I'm facing this direction it needs to be on that side of the ball of the player so um, the easiest way to do that is to add uh, uh, just an empty object a game object and let's call that um, ball location so uh, this ball location which I'm, it's not part of the skeleton so let's just put it over here as long as it's a child of this one it doesn't really matter Um, actually let's put it in here and we can move this location a little bit so it needs to be a little bit higher and a little bit in front of the player so this location seems fine to me uh, we can use for uh, the position of the the ball so we can make a reference to that one as well um, let's say this is the player ball uh, position something like that once we save it Unity is going to compile it and uh, we can see 
the new property appearing here so we're gonna drag in this ball location over here so now we can use that in our scripts and um, instead of this uh, transform uh, player we're gonna use the player ball position over here so we save it like that can try again and now the ball is in front of the player it needs to be a little bit higher it's just a little bit inside the grass but uh, it already looks a lot better the next step is gonna be to make this ball rolling there's actually a lot of ways to do that but I'll show you just one method um, this player has a forward factor uh, an up factor and a left uh, right factor uh, you can imagine that as a, an arrow sticking out of the player in the forward direction one in the up direction and one in the right direction I'll show it to you I've added this debug line it's gonna draw a line from the position of the ball to uh, the in the direction of the right vector of the player and uh, so if we now run the game you can only see this factor in the scene view so I'm gonna change the view a little bit so when I pick up the ball um, I need to change the camera a little bit here you see this uh, right factor so when I walk around you see that the right factor is moving it's always pointing to the right side of the player so what we want to do with the ball is we want to rotate around this angle so then the ball will always roll forward we also want to roll the ball only when we have a certain speed we could use the speed of the player but we can also just uh, get the speed of the ball um, so let's start with coding that so first of all we want to have uh, the speed of the ball so we're gonna make a variable for that and we're also gonna make a variable for storing the previous location and um, so we're gonna save the location so um, uh, only in this part of code we're gonna save the location so let's say um, we get the current location and we can calculate the speed by uh, calculating the distance between the current location and the previous location divided by the time that has passed since then at the end of the this part of code we need to set the previous location to the current location so it's saved and we can use it in the next frame so this gives us already the speed of the ball and then uh, we're gonna also um, add a rotation I'm gonna replace this uh, debug line now with uh, the rotation so we're gonna transform the ball we're going to rotate it along this axis 
and we're gonna rotate it um, with this speed and we're gonna rotate it in world space that's important because the ball could be uh, rotating by physics and uh, then uh, this uh, angle is not the one that we want to have so we always want to compare it to world space so let's save this and compile and let's see what happens so if we now run over the ball it's gonna rotate in the direction that we are running and it's standing still when we are standing still and it's rotating faster when we're sprinting so okay so we want the player to shoot the ball when you press the left mouse button <laughs> therefore we are going to this folder start assets and we're gonna go to input system over here there is a a place where you can define new actions so let's create an action called shoot and we need to bind a key to that um, I'm gonna bind the left button of the mouse and that's when we are using keyboard and mouse we can also add another binding and that's going to be uh, the gamepad, uh, I don't know, button I'm not so into gamepad so let's say left trigger and that's gonna be used when we're using gamepad and uh, you can do it also for Xbox and PS4 but let's leave it like this I'm gonna save this and now we also have to change this uh, script a bit so we have a boolean here that states if uh, we are sprinting or jumping we're gonna add one for uh, the shooting so a boolean for shoot and we're gonna just copy the code like they do for jumping so on jump I'm gonna copy this and say um, on shoot shoot input and this function is defined over here so what this is gonna do is uh, when we have the event shoot input which is fired on left mouse button then we're gonna set this boolean shoot to true and we can read that boolean from uh, because it's public we can read it from uh, another script and that's the script we're gonna create now so I'm gonna add the starter assets inputs I'm gonna treat it like this uh, because this data as its inputs is part of uh, the player so once we connect the script to the player let's do that now
so over here we have a player and it has the starter as its input script so if we add this script as well then we can find the, the component of type starter as its input which is the script and then we can test in the update function if start as its input dot shoot let's then um, for now say uh, we lock something to the debug So let's test this. So we're in the game and I'm gonna watch the console. As soon as I press left mouse button, I see that the word shoot appears over here. So it's working. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, to show the uh, kicking animation um therefore i'm going to go to the player and to the animation controller this is the one we got from the third person uh, example it has one layer and uh, different states and uh, you can go from one state to another uh, for example from uh, walking to jumping we could add another state for uh, kicking the ball, but um, then you need a lot of transitions to go from that state to the walking run. Uh, so we will choose to make a new layer for, for the kicking state. So if you take a look at uh, this state, uh, it contains idle, walk and run. If you have more speed, it will be running, and if you have less speed, it will be idle. So this is just blending between these states, and uh, depending on the speed, you see a different animation. So now let's add a new layer and call it shoot. We're going to use an animation for that. Um, going to my animations. Actually, I've downloaded another uh, animation from Mixamo with slightly different uh, settings. Um, I'll show you. So this animation is using the right foot and the hands are quite uh, far apart. While the old animation, it had the hands close to the body and it was using the left foot. So I think this one's slightly better, so we'll use that one. So I'll drag this one into this layer. I'm going to call this shoot. So this is my new layer. Uh, we're setting the mode to, by default to override, which means that uh, this layer is higher than this layer so as soon as this layer is activated it will override this layer and it will be active so now let's take a look at the code um, i've already prepared this so we don't have to do a lot of typing now first of all i changed the ball script a little bit if you take a look at uh, the um, player here we have uh, the ball location that is part of the player object it's a child and also the uh, player script is a property of this player object so we can refer to them without creating a new uh, reference over here so we uh, just have this uh, so we don't need to serialize it we just have this um, this reference 
that's being set in the scene and then after that we can uh, find the play a ball position like this because it's a child of geometry ball location so uh, and the player script we can find like this so why do we need this uh, reference to the player script well we're gonna uh, set it we go, we're gonna set uh, a reference to this ball script inside the player script so uh, as soon as this uh, ball is connected to the player the player script will have a reference to this ball script and we're gonna use that in the player script so how did we modify the player script then well here you can see the new property um, of the reference to the ball. We've also uh, added uh, the animation layer shoot. It's uh, layer one, so we created uh, a constant for that to refer to it. Um, I've also recorded the time when, when you're shooting. So as soon as we're now uh, pressing that left mouse button, we are gonna record the time. And uh, this is the time that we are shooting the ball. Now we start playing the animation from the beginning. Um, so this layer uh, starting from zero, we're gonna play and we're gonna set the layer weight to one. Um, so that will cause this animation to play instead of the running and uh, jumping animation. So now time shot is uh, higher than zero. So uh, we are gonna check now if uh, the time uh, that is passed is higher than 0 0.2 seconds if that's the case then we're going to shoot the ball we're not going to shoot it immediately because first the animation needs to move the foot a little bit and after that the uh, ball is uh, released so when we are shooting uh, we're going to use that reference so if the ball is uh, attached to the player then we're gonna change that and we're gonna make the stick false again of this ball uh, object we are gonna add uh, to the rigid body of that ball we're gonna add a force we're gonna add it uh, in the direction uh, that the player is facing we multiply it a little bit so it gets a bit stronger we're going to use an impulse because we're just going to uh, sh apply force at once and then it's finished and the ball will just move forward and slowly slow down um, and uh, also of course this uh, object is now uh, not anymore attached to the player so and finally uh, when the animation is completely finished we're going to reset time shot so we don't uh, go into this code anymore and instead we're gonna slowly uh, um, decrease the layer weight of this uh, shooting layer so we go back to running and uh, jumping and so on so how does this look like then um, let's take a look I can show you in the animator that will explain it more you see when I'm shooting it starts over here it starts from zero start playing the animation and we can also see that the layer is changing so keep an eye on this and this value and you will see what happens 
So when we shoot immediately the layer starts to become one. So we're playing this animation and we're playing it from the beginning. And as soon as uh, we're finished we slowly go back to the uh, base animation. So you can see that the hands are immediately apart and then slowly go back to the body again. Uh, why uh, we don't go slowly to this state? That's because I wanted to respond really fast. Uh, to go back it's not that big a deal, but when we start shooting, start pressing that button, we want immediately to have a response. So now if we press it, you can see that force is applied to the ball. So it's working. Uh, it's one thing I want to change maybe, um, we use the forward vector here, but actually uh, the ball is now always a little bit on the, on the grass and we want it a little bit higher, so we're gonna just change this. Um, shoot direction so we're gonna change the y value a little bit not sure how this will work out but let's check yeah you can see that the ball is already moving up a little bit let's do it a little bit more so you can see the effect so this um, this transform forward factor is always uh, between 0 and uh, 1 for the x, y and z values. Yeah, now it's shooting much higher. I'm gonna change it a little bit to lower, but uh, you get the point. So now we're gonna detect uh, if we score the goal. There's many ways to do that, but let's go for a very easy method. We'll be using the engine for this. So what we're gonna do is create uh, a new game object, a cube. I'm gonna call it, let's say, uh, goal detector. And I'm gonna move it into the goal. Let's first start with the goal where the side where the ball is on. So, I'm just going to move this into the goal, resize it a bit, not too wide but also not too thick because if it's too s not thick enough it will not detect the ball if it's too thick it will detect the ball when it's not really in the goal so we have to take some time to draw this I will temporarily uh, just disable this net so I can better see what I'm doing can lower it a bit, doesn't matter if it goes into the floor. I'm 
okay something like this perfect so now we're gonna disable the rendering so we won't see the object but we will still detect collisions with it we're gonna make it a trigger and now we're gonna create a new script um, call it a goal and uh, in this script we're gonna detect uh, if uh, we were hit so um, let's open the script we're gonna use the function on trigger enter and then we're gonna check if the thing that's hitting us is a ball uh, because it could be the player as well so um, how do we detect if it's a ball well there's different ways to do that <coughs> we could detect if it has a the object has a is, has a ball script because then it's a ball but we can also um, add a tag and just do that just to see that for once um, it's now untagged uh, well actually we need to go to the ball the ball we can create a tag for it I already did it we can add a tag and then uh, create a, a tag called ball and co co connect it to the uh, to the ball object so from untagged make it a ball so now we can check for uh, the other game object dot tag uh, equals ball so if it equals ball then we're gonna just uh, output some debug for now to see if it's working uh, let's say uh, goal okay so if we save this but we forgot one thing um, sorry about that um, of course we need to add this uh, script we just created to the call detector so now the script is running on the the object and when we hit it we will see we score the goal let's do it again to see if it's really working keep an eye on the console pick up the ball and shoot and there you go you see that's goal has been scored now we can just copy this uh, this goal detector and put one on the other side as well I've renamed this a little bit so this is goal one with goal detector one and this is goal two with detector two now let's go to the goal script and we're going to add a reference so just like this and we're going to add a reference to the player but actually we're going to add a reference to the player script because that's all we need over here so if we save this we can set the reference Okay, both references have been set. And we can use that reference to uh, make calls to the player script. But first we need to add to the player script um, some variable to keep track of the score. Actually, I'm going to create two variables uh, called my score and other score because you can score in both goals. And one is uh, your score and the other is a goal for the opponent because we only have one player object at the moment we're gonna create two variables on this player 
but uh, if you have multiple players uh, if you have two players you can add a score for each player in the script for that player but uh, now let's just create a public method um, increase score um, actually let's call that increase my score and that's just gonna increase the score and we're gonna need a second one increase other score Okay, so we can call this from um, our goal script. Instead of this goal, we're going to increase the score on the player. So we say script player increase score. But what do we need to increase? My score or other score? Well, that depends on if this script is running on uh, detector 1 or detector 2. So if it's detector one, let's say that's my score. So if name um, equals call detector one, then increase my score. Otherwise, it's the other score. So now we keep track of the score in the player. Oh, we made the typo here. Okay. And we can display these scores. In order to display these uh, values, we need um, a canvas. And on its canvas, we will put the TextMess Pro object. Let's call it text score. And um, let's position it on the screen. Um, So I'm going to put it in the upper left corner. Like this. Okay, that's working. But we're going to need a reference to this uh, object so we can uh, change this text from within uh, the player object let's first put in a default text let's just change this score to a little bit cooler uh, look I think this one is funny. Make it yellow. So we need a reference to that in our play script. So the object we just uh, added is uh, a TextMess Pro object. So And we gonna serialize this so we can set it from within the editor. So now, if 
go to my player script over here we can drag in this object so we have a reference and then we can uh, use that reference to uh, update the text that you saw over there so Um, Okay, so this will display our text, but uh, we're gonna use this function over here as well. So let's just create a, a new private methods. So call it update score, and it's gonna update the score so call this from within these functions so that's it this should display the score let's test it Yes, it works. So that's my goal and the other goal. Should be this one then. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, there's one final thing we need to do here is that uh, after the ball is uh, left the field, it needs to respawn because uh, otherwise it's gonna be a very short game okay so another thing we need to do is to make sure that the ball uh, respawns if it falls off the field therefore we're gonna add something to the ball script in the update function let's check if the ball um, So let's take a look at the ball. Over here. Uh, observe the wire coordinate. I would say if the ball is um, lower than minus two, we need to respawn it because it definitely has fallen off the the play field so if it's smaller than two then we are going to put it back on the fields by setting the position um, we're gonna put it on y coordinate zero that's fine because it can fall a little bit because it has physics enabled um yeah so let's do that and for the um 
x and z coordinates let's just respawn it at a random position uh, anywhere on this field just because we can um, I'm gonna take a look at the uh, z coordinates it's a maximum of 22 over here and a minimum of minus 6 over here so let's write that down Z is minus 6 until 22 and um, let's do the same for the X coordinate the X coordinate should be between Thirty-four and minus twenty-two over here. So minus twenty-two and thirty-four. So let's create a random value that's between these two values. Um, so for the X this will give us a random value between one and uh, between 0 and 1 so we have to multiply this by uh, the difference between these two uh, actually we're gonna do this one first the difference between these two is uh, 56 so we're going to multiply with 56 and then uh, minus the 22 so this will give us uh, a value between uh, these two values and then for the y we want to use 0 and for the um, the z value we're also going to use random value but we're going to multiply it by the difference which is 28 in this case and then a minus uh, 6 in this case so this will put our uh, ball back on the field so let's check out how this works out Oh, actually the ball is flying around. Something's wrong. Uh, obviously this is not correct. Oh, this should be minus two. Okay, now the ball stays on the field, but it disappears and respawns on the field once it's falling down. The only thing is now that it's still moving and um, keeps rolling off the field. So once we respawn it, we want it to um, not move anymore. So therefore we need to um, use the rigid body so rigid body rigid body uh, is um, get components rigid body great this code completion so we're gonna set the rigid body velocity zero and also the angular velocity to zero so now the ball should stick to the field after respawning it should just stay at one position until it's been picked up again
There you go. You can see that it's spawning a little bit too high. It drops on the field. We can just uh, fine tune that by using um, this y coordinate minus 1.14. Okay, let's spice things up a little bit. So, first we're going to drag the second player in. We can't play with the second player yet, but we can just put it in here. We set the animator for it as well. We can see we now can run through it. That's because uh, it does not have a mass collider yet. So if we add a mass collider, we can use it a little bit as a keeper. So you can already shoot the ball against it. So at the moment when you score a goal, the score is being increased, but we want to spice it up a little bit. So let's just now add a, a new text that will be displayed when we score a goal. I'm gonna call it text goal. We're going to say something like goal exclamation mark. Let's see how that looks. gonna move it over here and I'm gonna resize it make it really big I'm also gonna center it and I'm gonna change the font I'm gonna go back to the white color and choose another font I would say this one. Um, so we want to display something like this. But of course we only want to display it when we score a goal. So now we're going to make reference to this, to the player. So we can set uh, the visibility of this uh, text. So go to the play script and uh, add uh, a reference, a text goal, save it and make sure that uh, this new property of the player is linked to this field. So now we have the text goal at our disposal at the player script. So let's change the player script a little bit. We're gonna uh, introduce a variable called uh, goal text color alpha. This is determining how much the goal text will be visible. So if we have that, once we score a goal, we can. Uh, set this alpha to zero to one and then uh, if it's higher than zero we slowly decrease it over time and at the same time we're gonna increase the font size of the text so the text will fade out and at the same time get bigger that gets a nice effect um, So the initial um, alpha value should be zero. 
so we still need to change that so now the text is not visible by default but as soon as you score a goal it will be visible okay so the text size is increasing and then finally uh, becoming invisible after we score a goal the last step of this tutorial is to add the sound I went to the sound uh, site freesound.org and downloaded some sounds like this one um, it sounds like this so that's the kicking of a ball I actually only need uh, this part so I'll keep the sample as short as possible actually this is a bit too short let's just make it a little bit longer and fade it out okay that sounds good so I'm gonna save this as soccer kick let's call uh, this folder sounds and put in our wave files now I'm also gonna create um, uh, an empty object and call it sounds as well and in that I'm gonna put my uh, sounds so that they are already in my scene one thing to do now is to untick this box otherwise when you start up the game we will hear all the sounds and that's not what we want we want to play them uh, by calling them from the scripts sounds dribble cheer and kick and they're all gonna be called from the player script so let's open that now of course we could create references to these objects but that's kind of tedious so we're gonna do it a little bit different this time um, these are audio so sources so we're gonna call them like sound dribble and sound cheer and sound kick yeah that's right mm -hmm. so and then uh, in the start of our script we're gonna get these uh, in a different way we're go gonna say game object find we're gonna find it in this tree so if we start at the root we're gonna go to sound and then dribble for the first sound so be sure to type this exactly like it is over here this is the way to uh, get the objects if you don't want to have reference and you have a fixed place inside your scene so the first sound we're gonna play is the the cheering sound when we score a goal it's gonna be over here so can just say sound cheer dot play over here and it will be played 
the other one is for the kick uh, and that should be here this is the point where we actually kick the ball so the final sound we want to use is the dribble sound but for that one uh, we want it to be playing only when we are walking around with the ball so that's when the character has a certain speed so we will need to obtain the speed of the character we can do that by uh, using the character controller so we'll first uh, get a reference to that and uh, this controller gives us the velocity so to get the speed in this uh, update method we can say uh, the uh, speed is controller.velocity only uh, this is a factor tree it contains uh, the x y and z component but we're only interested in the speed of the character in a horizontal uh, direction and not uh, not when it's jumping up it shouldn't count as uh, as moving so we're gonna decompose this uh, factor tree so we're gonna create a, a new factor tree which will use this uh, factor tree but only the x and y component sorry only the x and z component because unity works with x and z for the movement on the uh, on the ground um, and we want the magnitude of that so this is a shortcut for uh, squaring both this and this one and uh, taking the root of that so this is the distance that you get uh, from these two components so this will be a float value so this will be the speed and the speed will be between 0 and 10 actually because the sprint speed is 10 and when normally walking it will be 4 so if we take that into account first we will check if we have uh, A ball attached to the player if that is the case then we will uh, we will measure the actually we the best idea is to just uh, create something the way it is in reality so we're gonna record the um, distance distance since last dribble and is a, if a certain distance uh, has uh, been uh, covered will be a float then uh, then we will play the sound so we add the, the speed times the time that has been passed to this uh, distance and if the distance is then greater than um, for example 1 then 
we're gonna play the sound and we're also going to reset this distance all right let's see what this will give us so this value uh, just uh, is something I start with now we're gonna have to observe how that works out yes we hear the sound but it's very frequent when we're stopping we don't hear it when we're sprinting we hear it very fast also when we don't have the ball we don't hear it so that's good the only thing is that uh, it should be um, not uh, as frequent as it is now so let's say uh, we take a distance of three yes this is sounds nice <laughs> so this concludes this uh, tutorial the next step would be to uh, create a multiplayer game so the other player can also join and uh, we have a real opponent and you can also make it so that uh, you can steal the ball from each other but uh, that's something uh, that I will explain in another video or uh, that you can figure out yourself I hope you enjoy uh, this tutorial and have a nice starting point for a game